Hi guys, this is Debbie with Debbie J's Crafting Corner. Today I'm sharing a trio of cards that I'm calling the Bear Witch Project. This adorable card trio features the Boo stamp set from Waffle Flower. I stamped the Bear Witch out onto some Nina Solar White cardstock using Vintage Photo Distress Oxide ink. I didn't want a harsh but black outline, and this is what I had on hand. Then I colored each of the bears with my Spectrum Noir markers. I'm doing some pretty simple coloring on these bears. I put down some MB1 as a base and then went back in with my darkest round MB4. To blend everything together I'm using MB3 and MB2. And then I'm using MB1 as the lightest tone. Moving on to his broom, I'm using most of the same colors. MB4 is the darkest and for the details, while MB2 is the base brown. I added GY4 in just to give, it, give the straw a little yellowish color. Then I went in with my new to me Pigma Micron pins. Now, I don't usually add pen details on my marker coloring, but I really love what I've been able to do with these ultra fine tip pens. I think I'll be using them a lot more. I colored the broomstick dark brown with MB4 and then moved on to his little jack-o'-lantern using B01 and B02 and then adding definition with one of those fine tip micron pens. Now for his hat, I went with some purples. I always have trouble blending these. I'm not sure why, but the colors just don't seem to work well together. So I tried something different and I love the result. I started with a light color, PL1. Then I touched the tip of it to LV3 so I could add the shadows and shading. It blended much better this way. To finish up the bear, I used one of the Micron pins to add in some hair. Now let's make some backgrounds. I'm making three cards, so we'll need three backgrounds. For the first one, I'm using some soft Catherine Cooler inks. My plan had been to do some ink blending, but my pads are a bit dry, so it didn't quite work out the way I had planned. I started off with ink to paper with Bellini and It's a Boy onto some Nina Solar White cardstock. Then I took a blending brush to try to add some color. That didn't work, so I went back to ink to paper. I'm thinking that maybe I should call this technique the Debbie is too impatient to figure out what's wrong and ink blend correctly technique. Anyway, I went on and added some It's a Girl and this pad is actually worse than the others. So I tried the blending brush again. I don't know why I tried it. It still didn't work. I mean, come on, you can see when I try it on just a plain piece of paper, nothing is showing up, so I'm not picking up any ink with these blending brushes. But to be honest, I'm also not willing to give up, so I keep trying to get some ink to go down on there. Then I thought, well, these are water-based, so let me try adding some water to the mix. It helped a little, I guess. I went back in with some more It's a Boy, and then I picked up Sweet 16. Now, I don't use this purple as much, and I was amazed. It actually had some ink on there, so I was able to get some onto my panel. And then I went back on with the Bellini, because it also had more than my It's a Girl. I finally have some ink on my panel, and I wouldn't recommend it, but I am using the ink pads themselves to do all the blending for me. Before leaving this panel to dry, I'm spritzing it with some more water using my Distress Sprayer. On to the next panel. 
I thought that I might have better luck with my distressings. I haven't used them for a while, and I'm using Seedless Preserves, Salty Ocean, and Abandoned Coral for this panel. So I started off with the ink to paper technique again. These look a bit dry too. The abandoned coral looks a little juicier than the other two. So I tried the blending brush again. Now while it was better, it still isn't giving me what I want. Which means that I return to ink to paper. At this point, I started getting really frustrated. This is just taking way too long. And I thought, what if I added water to the panel? Would that help with the blending? I guess not so much. I sprayed a little more water on the background and then blotted that up with a paper towel. I guess this will be good enough. for the last panel. On this one, I'm still using the Distress Inks and I'm using Seedless Preserves, Salty Ocean, and Black Soot. Starting off with the Salty Ocean with the ink to paper, um, ink pad to paper technique. Then I decided to try another shade of blue. These ink pads are just too dry and this one didn't really do anything for the look that I was going for. So then I went ahead and went on with the Seedless Preserves, which is very, very, very dry. Since I can hardly get any ink on my cardstock, I'm going to try something different. I don't know if this is going to damage my ink pads, but they are barely usable as it is. So I thought, how about spritzing the ink pads themselves? It is water-based ink or water reactive, so maybe this will help. This seems to be working okay, and I am getting a lot more ink on the panel, so at least it's working for this one project. Now that I've got those base colors down, I'll add some black soot to darken things up. And this time, I can actually use one of my blending brushes. Like the other two backgrounds, I'm spritzing this one with water and blotting that with a paper towel. Now I'll set this one aside to dry. The next step for the backgrounds is adding in some grass. In case you haven't guessed it yet, I'm making some skies for the Bear Witch to fly across. I'm going to be using one of the layered grass stamps in the Simon Says Stamp Layered Tulips stamp set. This may seem a little strange for a Halloween card, but I really love how it turned out. I placed the first panel in my Tim Holtz stamp platform. The colors softened up just perfectly for an early evening sky. Then I lined up the grass stamp along the bottom and closed the lid. You probably noticed that I shifted my panel up slightly. This is so I'll be stamping off the edge. So for this first layer, I'm using some Vintage Photo. Yes, Vintage Photo Distress Oxide ink. Um, so it's kind of got that brown tone, so it looks kind of like 
I'd say autumn grass. But I'm going to be layering the vintage photo and grass skirt um, over this panel repeatedly. So it's going to have a, a nice thick layer of grass there. So I keep sh um, shifting the panel and re-stamping with the different colors. I used this same process on the other two panels. So now we can start assembling our cards. The first one I'm calling Learning to Fly. So I'm using that lightest colored on um, the very first panel that we did that's in the lightest Catherine Pooler colors. And I'm going to be putting that onto an A2 size black panel. I actually do this with all three of the cards. I just want to have a nice crisp black mat around our scene. Then I'm taking my paper trimmer and then I'm going to trim the edge down so it's got about a sixteenth of an inch border all the way around. Next I'm going to add on um, my little bear. I'm going to center him right in the middle. And what I'm using is something that I had yet um, created in a previous video. You can see a link to it here. This is um, my own DIY action wobbler. I had created a bunch of these during a recent um, Scrap Hoarders video, so be sure to check that out to see how I created those. So I'm just taking the release paper off of one side, putting that on the back of my little bear, and then I'll take the release paper off the other side and center that in the middle of the card. I figure our little bear here is just learning how to fly. He's not really stable and he's wobbling around a lot as he's trying to get the hang of things. So I just thought that that was pretty cute. Next, I'm just going to um, go ahead and create a card base for this. I'm using some um, 300 GSM cardstock from Michaels, scored at four and a quarter. You probably saw that I turned that card base over. When you're doing a card base, you're going to want the indented part of your score line to be on the outside of your uh, of your fold so that because that one's already been broken down it makes it easier to fold now I'm just adding that panel down on the card base and this this card is done I just think he's just too cute for the second card we're gonna show how the bear witch is getting better at flying so I'm taking the second panel where the sky looks like it's getting a little darker so it's later in the day and I'm using one of the dies from the slide on over die set from Lawn Bond. You guessed it, this is going to be a slider card. So I went ahead and positioned the slider um, die in the middle of my card where I wanted to go through and um, I ran that through my Gemini Junior. Having to be very very careful with the washi tape I adhered it down it did try to rip my paper so be ultra cautious with that. Now I'm trimming down my panel just a little bit because I want it to fit well on the black mat. <coughs> so I'm going to glue the back piece that we had cut out into the slot and I had just refilled my art glitter glue so too much glue came out so I had to put that in there twice to get it in the right position and that worked out okay. I did have some trouble with this card. <laughs> um, I'm using a penny as the weight for this and I'm adding on some foam tape on top of that. Did have issues with it. I had to redo this about I don't know three or four times and I left most of that out of the video so you don't have to deal with that. This first time you see on here does not work real well so although it looked like it slides once I started putting things together it did not work well. For the background I'm using two layers of double double sided foam and trimming them around where the the penny is so it doesn't get caught and that's when I started having some problems where it just seemed like it was sticking too much on the channel. So I'm having to change my little um, piece that's adhering my um, my witch to that penny. So I doubled up on some foam adhesive and then I am cutting two rectangular pieces that fit perfect in that channel and giving it a little wiggle room and then I'm putting that on the back of the penny. 
Then I'm going to take and do the same thing with a second piece identical to it and put that in creating a straight line on the penny. So this little guy will not be spinning. He will just go slide back and forth in that channel and he works perfectly now. Then I went ahead and added him on in the front and you see he slides just fine. I added some of the, my powder tool around the penny so that it wouldn't stick on the adhesive that's there. And now I'm pulling off all of that foam tape, leaving a couple of handles to help me put this panel down straight. And I lined it up perfectly with that little um, background piece that we had put in there and that card turned out great. Now it's time for the last chapter and last card in our Bear Witch Project story. I took the last and darkest panel and a white circle from, die cut from my stash. This circle makes a perfect moon, so I put that down with some art glitter glue. And now I'm going to go ahead and adhere the last two um, bears onto the panel. So my thought on this one is he's done with his practicing, he's gotten pretty good, and now he gets to go fly around with his friend. And that second bear I'm adding a little dimension by adding on some foam tape behind him before I place him down. And now I'll trim that panel down and add it to a black mat. Off camera, I'm going to add some silver Happy Halloween die cut sentiments from my stash to each of the cards, as well as some little bat, -bat sequins. That finishes up these cards for today. I hope that you are inspired to get going on your Halloween crafting and I would love to see what you create. So come join my Facebook group, Crafting with Debbie, and show us your creations. I've left a link in the description box down below. Oh, and if you make anything using ideas from one of my Halloween videos, please post a picture and tag me at hashtag DebbieJ's Crafting Corner and at hashtag DJCC Halloween 2020. You can also see all of my Halloween videos for 2020 by clicking on the hashtag hashtag DJCC Halloween 2020 down in the video title. Here are some other videos that you may be interested in. Thank you so much for dropping by and remember if I can make it you can too.